hold down my left trigger and let go, you can see the arrow flies off and when it hits the wall, it kind of wobbles. Uh, and I thought that was quite a cool effect. So I'm gonna go ahead and show you guys how to do exactly that. All right, guys, welcome back. It's been a while, um, but I just wanted to keep the channel somewhat alive by posting another video on how to do stuff in Construct 3. In today's episode, we are going to learn how to fire better arrows. I've been currently working on a side project game with a little archer guy, and in the game, I've got a bow and arrow mechanic. And if I hold down my left trigger and let go, you can see the arrow flies off, and when it hits the wall, it kind of wobbles. Uh, and I thought that was quite a cool effect, so I'm going to go ahead and show you guys how to do exactly that. So back in our game with our little main character, all I've got on the screen here is a sprite, which is the player character, and all he has is the platform behavior. We don't need to have scroll 2 on there. I've got an arrow, which I'm going to give the bullet behavior to. We have a tile background, which simply has the solid behavior, so we can't escape the level. If I play it, the arrow will just fly off and I can move around and jump using the arrow keys and that is all that I can do right now. Let's just move the arrow off screen. What I like to do when I put things in the game to start with, I like to give them the destroy outside of layer behavior because otherwise when the game starts this thing will fly off to the right and it will just keep going right and never actually end up leaving the game. There will always be an object that's been counted and the X position will always be tracked so we can destroy it straight away and then the game won't have to worry about it being there. One thing you will notice with the arrow is that the origin point is on the far right hand side. You want this origin point at the tip of the arrow, so the sharp end, not the end with the feathers. You want it at the other end of the arrow because that's the point in which it's going to rotate round when it hits a wall. So the first thing we need to do is get the player spawning arrows on a command. So let's go ahead and go into the events, add an event and say keyboard on key pressed and let's use the space bar. So on key press spacebar, we're going to get the player and we're going to get it to spawn another object and that object is going to be the arrow. We're going to spawn it on layer 0, image point 0 and let's go back and just check the player's image point and that's right at the center. So if you had your player and its image point was at the bottom here at the base, then that's where the arrow would spawn from. We don't want that to happen, we want the arrow to spawn from the middle of the player. If you had a bow, you could spawn the arrow in pretty much wherever you wanted to on that bow, which is what I've done with my character in the example game. But for us, we're going to spawn it in right in the middle, and that's going to be absolutely fine. So we've got that event set up, so let's go ahead and play test. We'll see what happens when we push spacebar. No matter where we are, if we decide to jump, we've got an arrow now shooting towards the right hand side. Now, let's go ahead and make that arrow disappear once it collides with the tile background. So if we say arrow and we say on collision with another object and we see tile background, we can then say arrow and then we can say destroy. And then if I play that, you're going to see that it just destroys when it hits the wall. And that's all well and good and that will be absolutely fine. But taking your arrows and your game polish to the next level, we want to have something a little bit more visually appealing happening when the arrows hit the wall. So let's go back to the arrow and let's add another behavior and let's add the sign behavior. Now you notice the sign has different movement settings. It's defaulted the horizontal. What we want to do is change it to angle. Now if we preview that, you can see that it's moving on an angle at that image point on the right hand side. We can play around with how fast it goes by setting the period and the magnitude to different settings. We're going to set the period of our arrow to 0.25 and the magnitude to 20. So you can see that it's wobbling there quite nicely. If we decrease the magnitude to 2, you can see that it slows right down to a very small range. That's going to be key to what we want to do in the event sheet. Now let's go back to the event sheet, and instead of saying destroy arrow when it collides with the tile background, delete that, let's add a new action and say arrow, and let's set the bullet disabled so it stops. Then let's go to arrow and let's set the sign enabled so it starts. Now we need to go back to the game and click on the arrow sprite that we have before and uncheck enabled. So it starts disabled. So now when I hit space, the arrow will hit and it will just fly off. And as soon as it gets to the wall, 
it will do that wavy kind of twanging thing that it does when it hits. But you can see that it doesn't stop, so we need to fix that. So in the game events, we can go and say add an event, and we can say arrow, and let's go ahead and now run a check, and let's just see what that magnitude is doing. So if we, we're going to say if that magnitude is greater than zero, and remember zero, if we go back to the game, if I set the magnitude, if I go to preview, and I set the magnitude to zero, you can see that it's stopped. If I say, say that the magnitude is greater than zero, which means it's moving, new event, and we say arrow, and we compare the magnitude and we say if the magnitude is greater than zero, so basically if it's moving at all, then we need to add an action and say arrow, and we need to go to that magnitude and we need to set it. And we're gonna set it to arrow, which is the object that we're talking about, dot sign, which is the behavior we're referencing, dot magnitude, which is the part of the sign behavior that we want to talk about. So with the arrow dot sign dot magnitude, we're gonna set that to itself minus 0.2. So basically what that means is, as long as it's moving, it's going to gradually deduct 0.2 from the magnitude every tick until it stops. So now when I hit the spacebar button, it will fly out to the wall and it will wave a little bit as it hits. And then once it gets to zero, it will stop. And that's how you make a cool arrow effect in Construct 3. If you found the video useful, then do me a favor and hit the like button so that more people can see the channel. And if you enjoy the content, consider subscribing for more tutorials just like this one.